Two years later came Count Fleet. His owner couldn't sell him as a yearling, but stable boy Sam Ransom said keep him. When he wants to run, he could just about fly. He raced for the wife of John Hertz, founder of Hertz Red a Car, and was trained by a World War I balloon pilot, Don Cameron. Like the stable boy, Johnny Longdon begged Hertz not to sell Count Fleet. So it was during the war, you know, and I jumped on my bicycle and uh, ran down to the corner and called him and told, asked him not to sell him. I said, I think he's a real good cold. He just, just uh, immature jet and he was going to sell him for $4,500. The 1943 Derby was called the Streetcar Derby. Because of the wartime fuel shortage, out-of-town visitors were discouraged. The locals arrived by streetcar and watched the Field of Ten parade in the paddock. Count Fleet was the heavy favorite. His daddy, Ray Count, had won the Derby. Now it was his turn. Number five. Count Fleet broke quickly from that number five hole to take the lead. He had suffered a bad cut on his left rear hoof in the Wood Memorial. Serious enough that Jockey Longdon had ridden to Kentucky with him, holding ice on the wound. But now all was well, although there had been some doubt all week. A 12 to one shot named Gold Shower prompted the pace, while the second betting choice, Blue Swords, was fourth, just behind Slide Rule. But there never was any real question of the outcome. Count Fleet was the class of the field. As they came down the stretch, Blue Swords challenged, but not seriously. The horse nobody would buy as a yearling. The colt, who was almost sold for $4,500 as a two-year-old until Jockey Longdon made his plea, had won the Kentucky Derby. Back at the barn, he wore out his hot walker as he always did. This colt seemed inexhaustible. Then it was on to Baltimore and the Freakness, just seven days later. The owners had reason for confidence. Only three horses challenged Count Fleet, who was held at odds of one to nine. Only one other derby horse, Blue Swords, was in the field as they left the gate. Vincenta was second choice in the betting. The fourth horse was New Moon of 49 to one shot. Blue Swords had finished second to Count Fleet five straight times, and today would turn out to be the sixth. The race made one recall those words of Sam the stable boy. Someday he's going to be one fine racer, he had said. When that leggy brown colt wants to run, he can just about fly. After three quarters of a mile, he led by four. And then he began to stretch out the lead. He loved to run, loved to bury his opponents. And Jockey Longdon gave him his head. The lead was five, then six, then seven. And at the finish line, it was eight lengths. Would anyone challenge him in the Belmont? Well, Longdon made no pretense that he was the Colts' master. It was all very simple. Just let him go. Going into the race, I thought he'd have to fall down to get beat. Then I thought he could get up and win. He was that good. He was just a, uh, what you'd say, he was kind of a freak horse. He could do anything. He could go to the front, come behind, and run all day, run in the mud, it didn't make any difference. Just to stay sharp, Count Fleet won the withers between the Preakness and the Belmont. And on Belmont Day, only three horses appeared on the track. The second choice in the betting, Ferry Manhurst, was held at odds of 29 to one. The other entrant, Desiranto, was 53 to one. Count Fleet gave his supporters no anxious moments. After a half mile, he led by eight. After a mile, by 12. At the quarter, the lead was 20 lengths. Longdon just enjoyed the ride as the count ran and ran until he won by 25 lengths. How far is 25 lengths? Well, it's this far. Might any horse ever win the Belmont by more than this? Remarkably, the answer is yes, but that would be getting ahead of our story. Count Fleet had won the Triple Crown. During the race, he had suffered a slight injury to his near or left front ankle. It didn't respond to treatment, and he was retired from further racing. At Stoner Creek Farm, he became an outstanding stallion. One son, Count Turf, won the Kentucky Derby. Another, Counterpoint, won the Belmont. He lived to the great age of 33. Then his front legs gave out. For two days, the champion tried to rise on those legs that once could just about fly. He couldn't do it. He's buried where he was foaled at Stoner Creek.